Hello everyone, and welcome back to World of Warship Splits with Terry. Today, I figured we'll uh, get a little bit of a review about the German destroyer line and uh, get ourselves set up for me to go and explore the higher tiers. Because personally, I've only played two tier six on the Ernst Gede, and I haven't quite made it yet. Well, I, I have actually unlocked the Leberecht Maas, but um, I, I want to, you know, Get a look, get, take a look at the higher tier destroyers and see if it's worth uh, still grinding up the rest of the line. Because that's uh, that was the one, I think, I, when I put it to a vote, w the one you were most interested about uh, after, um, after the Road to Montana series. So, let's kick this off with a bit of a historical overview. And in order to understand the German destroyer line, we actually have to, we have to start a little bit back. <laughs> so sit, sit back, relax, uh, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit about, about things in more general per terms. So, uh, destroyers. What are destroyers? Well, in the olden days, uh, before the war, uh, mostly ships were relying on their naval artillery to do things and on their guns. And then torpedoes were invented, and uh, torpedoes were shaking things up a little bit. Because the guns of a, of a ship have, well, a, a symmetry between the amount of ship required to carry the gun and the power that the gun has. Because a bigger gun, like a bigger bigger gun barrels, are heavier, they have higher calibers, they need bigger turrets. Uh, turret, bigger turrets are heavy, they need bigger barbettes. And in all, all, all in all, you need a bigger ship to carry that around on the ocean. So bigger gun equals, or more firepower equals bigger ship. The torpedo doesn't work like that at all. Because, well, a torpedo really just needs a form of tube that you attach somewhere on the, on the deck of a ship, allows you to flump it into the water, and then it goes and, you know, very slowly, uh, finds its way towards the enemy ship, and if you're lucky, it blows up there and makes a big hole into it. So suddenly, you had a weapon that allowed somebody uh, to build a small ship, or a lot of small ships, which, uh, would, which could take on really, really big and expensive ships. And that must have annoyed the battleship designers to no end. I mean, you, you're, you're, you're like you're proud of your profession and you're coming up with the best battleship designs. And then somebody comes around and says, you know what? This is actually not that necessary anymore. <laughs> well, first of all, they started scrambling to put smaller guns onto their battleships, which initially sounds counterintuitive. But uh, the idea was that if you have something in the, in the range of 300 millimeter caliber, it takes a while to reload, it takes a while to aim, it's all very big and glumpy, and it was very good at blowing up big ships, but not so good at hitting small, fast-moving targets. So people started putting smaller guns onto ships to deal with the torpedo boats. And eventually somebody said, okay, so if you can build small, cheap boats that um, have no defensive value whatsoever, but <laughs> that, can, that, that can pack a lot of firepower and actually, uh, you know, help dealing with larger capital ships, why not build small cheap ships that we can produce in larger quantities to deal with these small cheap ships? So they figured we'll build the torpedo boat destroyer, the thing that was supposed to destroy the torpedo boat. And that's where the term destroyer comes from. Now, the actual torpedo boats actually exist, or existed, and still do. And this is where it goes back to the, the, to the German tech tree a little bit. Because the ships we're seeing at the beginning here are torpedo boats. They're not destroyers in, in the traditional sense. The Germans were kind of rejecting the idea of uh, torpedo boat destroyers for quite a bit, at least throughout the First World War, and um, generally built what we call what they called flotten torpedo boat or fleet torpedo boats. So the idea was, oh no, they're not actually short range ships that are capable of, that is really just good for coastal defense and sort of things, but they are actually ocean going ships. But they're not there to deal with other torpedo boats. No, no, they are there to sail with the fleet and drop torpedoes onto the enemy capital ships. That's what their purpose is. So the, the first ones we see here, the V-25, the G-101 and the V-170, are all still torpedo boat designs. And these are First World, first world War ships. And the, if you're confused with all the numbers and letters, so the, the, the letters in front are uh, the designation of the shipyard that built the thing. So, uh, for example, the V, I think, stands for the Vulcan, uh, Vulcan shipyard. And then the number is, I don't know if it's, if it's just uh, incremental or uh, if it's actually of any significance. 
But uh, yeah, these are First World War torpedo boats. So for example, if we look at the tier four, the V-170, she gets um, she gets 105 millimeter guns. And that's actually large for the torpedo boats because uh, most of the time they had somewhere something between 50 millimeter and 80 millimeter guns because they were not meant to sink other torpedo boats. These were things that were meant to carry torpedoes to the enemy. So uh, these, these things are torpedo boats. At tier five, we're meeting the T-22. And the T in this case does not stand for the shipyard that built it, but it actually stands for torpedo boat because this, the T-22, is a torpedo boat. This is a, and we'll see if we can see it here. Yeah, this is a 1942 design. So this is a design actually from right well into the Second World War, but it is not a destroyer. It's not a torpedo boat destroyer. It is a thing. And once again, we find 105 millimeter main guns. Uh, it is a thing that is meant to drop torpedoes. Now, in World of Warships, because, well, the, we don't actually have a distinction between torpedo boat and destroyers, we have kind of compensated for this very, very low gun caliber with the traditional German armor piercing being very, very good. So most of the time, what you really want to use in these boats is the armor piercing, um, if you know where to shoot, uh, especially against other destroyers. But yeah, this is still a torpedo boat. So, but at actually a later design, which then brings us to tier six, which is the Ernst Gede, which didn't exist. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the idea here, so at some point, the Germans then said, okay, we, we're going to need to have something that has a bit more oomph and can deal with uh, like the British destroyers and the French destroyers. So we were actually starting to talk about proper destroyers. Then obviously, well, the, the Germans have a bit of a propensity for going, for putting... Uh, how, how am I going to put this? Uh, for showing the other ones that they've got the bigger one. So they started thinking about putting 150 millimeter guns on these things. Which didn't go well, which didn't go very well. So this is this is allegedly a, um, a an early design for the Zerstörer, which means destroyer in German, 1934, which was the first design after the Treaty of Versailles that was actually destroyers. And uh, yeah, they they did stick 150s on them. Now in reality, that didn't work out very well either, because well, 150 millimeter turrets are bloody heavy. And these things were not very good at ocean going or being ocean going. So they uh, reasonably quickly actually went back to the 127 millimeter or 128 millimeter. Now, the confusion here, and I actually did research this because it confused the crap out of me. Because when I looked at historical documents, they all designated at 127 millimeter. Yet in the game, they're all 128 millimeter. So it turns out that the Germans were mildly confused there because they designated their guns at 100, as 127 millimeter, yet the bore inside the barrel was actually 128 millimeter large. <laughs> it's, it's embarrassing, really. People, get your stats right. Anyway, so if you see that, it's the same thing, right? If somebody says, oh yeah, but German ships had 127 millimeter, or German destroyers had 127 millimeter main guns. Yes, they did on paper, but in practice, they were actually 128 which has interesting implications in game because there, I think there were recently some changes to destroyer uh, caliber guns where uh, they only affected up to 127 millimeter and so they didn't affect the Germans. But uh, yeah, so in tier seven, uh, we see the Leberecht Maas and this is the Z1, uh, the first destroyer, proper destroyer to be built after uh, the, tre the Treaty of Versailles and um, uh, right into the Second World War, or in 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 the in leading up to the Second World War, so this was the first class of destroyers that actually uh, existed, and the Leibwacht Mars was the Z1, the first one. Now, depending on who you ask and which source you're checking, the German destroyers were either decades ahead of their time and more powerful than anything else in the world, because on account of being German, <laughs> or um, they were really a bit crap because the designs were slightly rushed, the engines were overly complicated, uh, <coughs> Tiger, <coughs> and um, the, the ocean, they took on a, a lot of water. Uh, the ocean going capabilities weren't great either. So, but yeah, these things existed and uh, they did go back to the 128s, which uh, didn't deter them because if we start looking further up, at the at tier eight, we're smacked up right back with the, the 1936A design 
which went back to the 150 millimeters because people weren't quite sure what they wanted um, if they wanted small cruisers or actual destroyers. So there were definitely more experiments going on with 150s. That's why we're seeing this kind of mix here. But they eventually gave up and stuck to the 128s. Uh, they did lose a lot of the destroyers during the Norwegian campaign, and mostly to poor planning and the fact that they had more, most were almost out of fuel when they were sitting in the fjords. But uh, they did score the occasional victory against the, the British. But in, in general, German destroyers tended to be not... Uh, not particularly successful. And then we come up here at uh, tier 9 with the Type 36C, so the third iteration of the 1936 design, uh, which again starts going down to the 128 millimeters or 127, depending on who you ask. And then lastly, the 1942 design, which the Z52, which didn't exist because I think there was one destroyer of this design actually laid down. I think it was the Z51. So we're actually, of course, not getting it. But uh, these, these were existing designs, but they, were, they didn't get around to building them anymore because the British tended to fly planes and drop bombs on them every time they tried. And it was just not really particularly successful at that stage of the war. So what are the German destroyers? What is special about the German destroyers in, in the game? Uh, good armor piercing sturdy ships so again if we're looking at like maybe tier 8 here uh, they are reasonably sturdy and um, they do get hydro so you combine good guns with uh, hard hitting armor piercing and uh, and a sonar and you have a destroyer hunter so that's pretty much what these things are but the torpedoes actually aren't dreadful either i mean if you look at the at tier 8 here you've got an 8.1 kilometer torpedo range so once again i mean the, the surface detection isn't great, but uh, if, you, if you were so inclined, you could build, build her for stealth and actually, uh, you know, be reasonably successful torpedoing things. But yeah, running into a German destroyer when you're rushing a cap is generally a bad sign <laughs> because it means you're, you're about to be in a world of trouble. Uh, starting at tier 9, I think, yeah, we're starting to actually get smokes, but, you know, with one smoke charge, it's more like an occasional thing. I don't think it's a huge change for the smoke, for, for the play style. And in tier 10, the Z52 does get, uh, does get two smokes. But uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see how these actually play. Uh, the in-game description says something about her having, having extremely powerful AA, um, which is not really the case. I mean, honestly, if you look at it, no, this is not what you call a powerful AA. <laughs> not a tier 10. I'm sorry, Wargaming. It's not. And in practice, it wasn't, because these turrets uh, actually didn't really have the necessary the necessary mechanics to track fast-moving aircraft, they were not that good at being dual-purpose. But, um, I mean, they, they were supposed to. So maybe that's where we're going with this. Anyway, so, so much for uh, a quick review and an intro to the line. So let's, um, I think I have an older re recording from some Anskeda gameplay around. So let's go through that and just generally have a look at, you know, what it is you do with German destroyers. And here we are in Golden Channel. We're in a bottom tier battle. There's Colorado, West Virginia, Ismail, New Mexico, Leander, Bliska, and Icarus. And the Icarus is a very, very good destroyer. But uh, what you want to do in a German destroyer in a situation like this, in a map like this, is it's all about the cap control. Because none of the enemy destroyers can easily uh, take you on. And uh, they don't have a lot, in, a lot in terms of cruisers there. Now, I do have to obviously be careful with the, with the battleships as well, but uh, you, you will find that a lot of other destroyer captains will not necessarily try to, to take you on and do their hardest to avoid that. We always we, we want the armor piercing, and uh, as soon as we're up to speed, we want to use the engine boost to get up into the cap circle. German destroyers are not the fastest out there, but they're also not slow. They are actually reasonably quick. So we were going to get into the cap, uh, maybe drop some some blind torps out. We do have, we do have, we do have theoretically the capability of stealth torping here, but uh, it's not by much. And honestly, um, it, uh, it you know it's it's not necessarily what you ne what you also need to do, because once again, sturdy destroyer. Okay, enemy D enemy DD is in there and smokes up for some reason. Okay, I'm not sure why he's doing that. Um, could be the Icarus, maybe I don't know. But uh, we'll drop some torps in his general direction. 
just in case he wants to come out there and then um, we'll wait for the rest of our team to catch up inside the cup circle. Brooklyn is taking up position at the at the island corner, which is the right place to be. And we are cupping, so there, it's three of us in the cup. So I think two, uh, two at best of the enemy team in here. Um, and uh, yes, that, that's where the Icar where, where something is sitting. Maybe the Icarus, maybe the Bliskavitcher. But um, uh, there were some torpedoes coming in on the corner. Oh, there's the Leander. Okay. So generally you'd say cruiser. Ooh, dear, the destroyer. Not so much in this thing. Um, I mean, at least uh, at least the Leander I would take on in this because these guns actually can do a reasonable amount of damage. Plus, I do have some backup. Uh, let's just loop around and we're getting, even at, even at this range, we are getting full penetration. So loop around. We're holding the cup. We don't have any rush to move forward. We still don't know where the enemy destroyers are. There are some torpedoes behind us, but uh, I think the Leander has seen the error of his ways. Okay, there's the Bliska. And Bliskovic is heading over that way. And Leander seems to be heading over a way as well. So we'll just... Um, well, let's, if he's ignoring us, we'll just shoot at him. Or someone else get him. Because we do have... Yep, yeah, there we go. Leander is dead. And there's... Oh, okay, there's the Icarus. Now, New Mexico, where are you going? Forward? Backwards? Oh, you were trying to bait me, are you? Okay. So, about two, two torpedo spreads. And uh, there's no reason for us to rush forward like that. Nelson is all doing over there because that Icarus, obviously, has a smoke and can just drop some single uh, single torps. So I'm firing up the Hydro not to spot the Icarus because I think he's too far away. And I don't want to be getting that close with all these battleships over there, but to spot the torpedoes for the Nelson. Unfortunately, the Nelson, um, I think, is, has not expected the Icarus to be there, even though I had him spotted and has not expected the torpedoes. But the New Mexico is the one actually taking him out so that Nelson is gone. And I'm just keeping keep working on the Icarus while uh, not not rushing too far too much closer because he does have support from two battleships back there and I don't want to get uh, shut down by these things. Right, and once again we are controlling the capture circle. My job is to keep the enemy destroyers out of the capture circle to keep things spotted to make sure that my team knows where the torpedoes are. Okay, West Virginia. Uh, for me, it's an instinct. Whenever I see a West Virginia, uh, I'll just drop torpedoes straight down the aiming the aiming line because of that uh, event where everybody got a free West Virginia who hadn't logged in for ages, and they all were just sailing to their death. Oh, the Icarus is coming around again. So let's fire open it, uh, open up fire at him, and see that we get rid of we get rid of that guy. Okay, West Virginia is actually shooting at me, so I don't want to necessarily stay away, oh, uh, stay too close. Oh, Icarus spotted. Okay, Icarus smokes up. Um, so he's firing at me, so just keep moving, keep some shots in. Uh, up there, some torpedo hits on the West Virginia, and we've got a New Mexico to shoot at. Now, uh, AP against battleships, yes, um, New Mexico is very slow, and look at what happens when I'm hitting him in the bow section at 7 kilometers with armor piercing. Yes, I am making full penetrations. But the Icarus has shown up again, so <laughs> once again, uh, sonar up, um, and that battleship right next to this Icarus is playing a very good game there. Uh, got rid of the West Virginia and we got rid of the New Mexico. Uh, now it's once more time to see that we can keep him out of the capture circle. See, that, that's the thing, right? I, don't I, I can't necessarily easily rush him right now and he's doing his level best what he can to take out anything that comes in the cap, but I'm sitting right smack up in the middle of the capture circle and even though we are down one ship, uh, we are still ahead on points because they just haven't managed to cap. There's the Bliskovitcher, who cannot come, who, who couldn't if he wanted to, also couldn't really come into the capture circle because I would have started shooting at him. Okay, I'm spotted. That must be the Icarus. So put her in reverse again, just in case he's got the torpedoes away. And keep firing at the Colorado. Okay, there's the Icarus. So uh, guns lined up. And we open the fire again and see if he's... Is he going to smoke up? Uh, there he goes. Okay, he fuel smokes. So, all right, I'm just going to back off, drop some torpedoes in his general direction just in case he wants to come rush me. And just wait for his smoke to expire. I mean, I don't have a Hydra anymore. But uh, it, he wouldn't have been in Hydra range anyway. You can, obviously, Hydra destroyers who are in smoke. When he's shooting at the Colorado. Yeah, he's dodged those, but there's probably Icarus torpedoes in the way. And you see, the thing is, I, I, I'm just keeping him out of the capture circle and wearing his health down. Every time he's showing up, yeah, there are the torpedoes. Every time he's showing up, um, he gets blocked in the side and he just can't win a gunfight with, <laughs> with, with one of these ships. So uh, this, is, this is kind of the role you play as a German destroyer. Now, it's about time to end this Icarus because he's been... We're down to three ships, and while we're two, 200 points ahead, I haven't looked at what the health of my cruisers back there is. So let's get rid of this guy. And I think he knows at this point that he's done for. Um, because, yeah. <laughs> Good night. 
So that's it. Uh, yeah, don't don't even try to torpedo enemy destroyers. You have the gun power. Uh, these are these are the same guns that you would find, say, on the Nuremberg. So you do definitely have the gun power to deal with things uh, on on these terms. And uh, yeah, by the looks of it, I think this is about it. Uh, it's one minute left with 300 points ahead, thanks to maintaining the capture circle. And that's the sort of thing you want to do in in German destroyers. You want to uh, you don't want to get into close range fights with cruisers or things. Obviously, if you can avoid it or battleships because you are a big target, you don't have the best surface detection and um, you have uh, reasonably good armor. Can I lob this? No, I can't lob this. Most of the time you want to stick to the armor piercing just because armor, the German armor piercing is very good. And even if you're dealing with battleships, if, you, if, you, if they are close enough that you can reliably target their bows or sterns, you can easily do full penetrations with these things and do 600 damage per shot. But um, yeah, and against destroyers, you're on the right one as well. You can fire high explosive at long range, try to set fires, but at close range, you want to use the armor piercing. Let's see if I can get some shots into the bow of that Colorado over there. You see, there you go. Um, 500, 537 damage into the bow of the Colorado, and he would have died to my torps, but the battle ended first. So, this was a quick review, tech tree talk over the German destroyers, and some history and uh, maybe less confusion about these things now. And uh, starting with the Leberecht Mars, the Z1, the destroyer that actually existed, <laughs> we will uh, we'll play our way up the we'll play our way up the, uh, the the tech tree in the standard format of uh, unlock the ship first battle, and you get to see it. So that's it for today. Thanks everybody, and I'll see you next time. Bye.